and we've got some stunning, some of them shocking pictures for you now because the Ocean Photographer of the Year Awards always produce some stunning images of life beneath the waves. But this year's competition has seen a, a shift in focus. Uh, they're also looking at the impact of humans on marine life. Yes, the winner was this. It's beautiful but a heartbreaking image of a sea turtle which has become entangled in abandoned fishing nets off the coast of Sri Lanka. It was taken by a German photographer, Simon Lawrence, who managed to cut the animal free after taking this picture. In my line of work, I do see it quite often, unfortunately, that uh, marine animals are trapped. Um, it, it is painful to see because obviously uh, we are, as a human, the cause of of the situ the underlying situation. So in this case, it's a it's a mass of nets, uh, which fishermen use to catch fish, not turtles. And somehow this ghost net um, came adrift or whatever happened to it. But we are the reason these animals are stuck in, 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 in trash like that. Simon, who took that winning photograph. Let's talk now to Hannah Rudd, who's a marine biologist and a conservationist. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks for coming in. Um, I mean, the good news is that in that particular case, the, the turtle survived. Simon rescued it after taking the picture but heartbreaking to see it tangled up in those nets. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and unfortunately, this is becoming you know, more and more common throughout the world's ocean, particularly looking at things like ghost nets, um, you know, discarded nets from commercial fishing vessels um, that are just left, and they essentially drift through the ocean and continue to fish um, for, for the rest of their lives. So they might, just, they might catch turtles, and they might catch dolphins, whales, seabirds, other marine life. Um, but this one was lucky. Um, and luckily, uh, thankfully, there was a human there to, to cut him out um, and, and let him live another day. Incredible image, also an incredible story. How important is it that we look at these images and also know the story behind them? Yeah, absolutely. You know, the ocean is out of sight, out of mind for so many people. And, you know, we've, we've just heard everyone has so much going on in their, their minds right now um, that it can be hard to, to consider another thing, another shocking thing that's happening on the planet. But, but thankfully, this competition has really shed light um, on the negative impact that, that humans are having. So that might be through climate change, plastic pollution, um, sewage pollution, uh, you know, other impacts we're having on the marine environment, overfishing, um, but also the positive stuff too. We can't forget that. There's some really wonderful images of marine life here that just shows the breadth of diversity in our seas um, and the conservation effort that's that's going ahead. You know, this is a great white uh, shark uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> My uh, favourite animal. You're singing again, John. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I think these guys are, you know, massively misunderstood creatures, actually, thanks to Jaws. And actually, you know, Pete oh. Benchley that, that wrote Jaws said, you know, he, he would never have done it if he thought that uh, we'd have this persecution of sharks mm. as a result. Um, and beautiful, uh, green, I think it's a green sea turtle, if my eyes don't deceive me. Um, uh, just sat there on a, on a coral reef. Um, just stunning, stunning imagery. And as we can see, you know, watching series like Frozen Planet 2, we are always learning more about the ocean. So is that, is that fish or is that an eye? That is fish. That's, That's a fish. huge wow. shoal of fish out in the ocean. Um, so, yeah, absolutely beautiful, spectacular diversity that very few of us actually get a chance to see. Mm. You know, you, you've got to have a scuba qualification or spend great amounts of time underwater um, snorkelling to be able to actually get a glimpse of this, this marine life. So it's fantastic this competition's opened this up to so many of us. And is that one of the challenges, I guess, in your job, your work, your research, that um, so much of the ocean is a mystery to us? Absolutely. I mean, 95% of the ocean remains undiscovered. You know, we are always learning more things every time we go out there, particularly in areas like the deep sea. So um, threats like deep sea mining, where you know we're looking for potentially precious metals that might be put in car batteries, actually, you know, we could be doing more damage than, than we realise. So it's always a trade-off. Um, yeah, spectacular imagery there. Um, but I think What's that, Hannah? I think it's on a piece of plastic, is unfortunately. Is a starfish or a... It is a uh, octopus, is I believe. Good? Yeah. Um, more plastic. Yeah. More plastic. Um, and, you know, plastic, we're never going to rid the oceans of plastic, but we can certainly try and do our bit to reduce our consumption of it. I think that's really important. Some of these beautiful images come from the most exotic places all over the world that most of us can only dream of visiting, let alone going underwater. But, but the, 
the competition also tries to shine a light on what's happening in our own waters around the UK, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a really important point to pick up on, so I'm thankful, thank you for doing it. Um, and it's something I write about in, in my book that's coming out in January, actually. Nice, that cheeky plug there. Um, mm -hmm. That we always think about, um, you know, far-flung tropical seas when we're, when we're thinking about marine life, you know, places like the Maldives and Australia, South Africa. But actually, we have a breathtaking abundance of marine life here on our own front doorstep. Um, you know, we've got puffins and the second, uh, the, you know, the second largest shark in the world, the basking shark, and all of these these threats: climate change, plastic pollution, um, you know, sewage pollution, overfishing. They're all happening here in the UK too. So there's plenty we can do on our front doorstep to save our seas. Yeah, you mentioned something we have spoken about a lot on this program: sewage pollution. Yes, we've talked a yeah. lot, haven't we, just now about plastic? But you know, that is something that must be heartbreaking for you to see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, personally, I don't understand how anyone <laughs> can think that that's OK to, to, to you know, uh, decimate our, our aquatic environments with pollution. It's certainly something I've been campaigning on with the Angling Trust through Anglers Against Pollution um, and other environmental NGOs. Um, you know, people depend on these, these spaces, particularly at the moment, um, for you know, mental health, well-being, you know, escapism from the everyday, and and yet you know some people think that it's okay to pump raw sewage into the into the environment and ruin it essentially for everyone. So it's not just a risk for environmental health, but also human health. Thanks so much for coming and, and talking us through those pictures and explaining that the stories behind them. I think the stories behind them are as striking as the, the, the images themselves, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, absolutely. No, thank you very much. And just, just for everyone could be an everyday marine conservationist. You don't have to be a scientist to save the sea, so it's really important. You don't have to live on the sea, I suppose. Yeah. You don't have to live on the sea either, no. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming in. No worries. Thank you.